Hi there. Alrighty, there was a lot of bizarre recording nonsense that was going on here, and just general emulation of weirdness. Um, so what happened here? Uh, last time Sarah almost got completely offed. I believe she has some better stuff available for her, or I'm completely wrong. Oh well, doesn't matter. Um, pretty soon here everyone will be at 15 and they'll be able to do some better stuff. So here's the thing. If you just sort of show up and walk up to their front gate unarmed, I mean, it's a bunch of priests, right? So, it's all good. Now, here's one thing that I always kind of wondered, because I always end up going to this front gate, and they get into a fight and they talk to you. It occurs to me, I keep wondering if you can actually do the same thing to the back gate. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. I don't think so. <laughs> Why doesn't he approach from the front then? Uh, true. Well, he's totally unarmed, so he'd stand no chance anyway. Alright. Let's do it this way. That's a neat little thing that they did there. And yeah, even if you equip a piece of armor, it still counts as being armed here. Plus half a dozen, no, it would be a full dozen, actually. And this guy actually believes the, uh, the fact that he came to talk. <laughs> bunch of, uh, bunch of priests and whatever. First idea is to go stab each other instead of stopping the guy that wants to come in. I came here to talk. Let's stab each other. I love logic here. <laughs> Lady, aren't you a little bit cold wearing that in the snow? So yeah, turns out his dad's there. And this is the part where it gets a little bit weird, because, yeah, they have that whole thing of, hey, the healers are the only ones that can heal and all that. And at this point, yeah, they bring a guy sort of, kind of, back to health. Hmm, the people calling themselves the Dark Knights are maybe not so great? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a little bit. But yeah, no, so Tartarus' backstory, though. So it's kind of weird, like, <laughs> I got part of it from KOL. Actually, most of it is from KOL, but... <laughs> just consistently screwed by a situation. Like, the guy goes to a place, pretty much finds out everything he was sent there to do was a complete lie. Then the one guy that actually knows that it was a lie ends up getting killed off. And then he ends up basically fighting the devil. The one other person that was there supporting him the whole time ends up going and... Well, she ends up deciding, hey, screw this guy, I'm gonna go hang out with the devil for forever. <laughs> So that ends up happening. Like, of all, of all the endings, it kind of seemed almost like they felt like they needed to toss that whole subplot into there. Then at the end realized, hey, wait a minute, we need to throw a tragic twist on this. Okay, so long story short, he's, you know, King's kid or whatever. Oh, whoops. I hit a button and for some reason that made Steam come up. I don't know why the PS button does that on this controller. Ah. Man, started a bunch of different things there, and I'm probably not going to end up finishing talking about any of them. So his dad just died. And there we go, he and your father were siblings, they were brothers, so yeah, Branton's his uncle. <laughs> yeah, you can blame your dad for that name. And you are your worst enemy! And hilarious. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, turns out uh, he actually grew up with them. <laughs> okay, you can probably let her go at this point. Um, less suspense. There we go. Hmm. Long story short, yeah, she's the kid of the head of their religious order there. And he finds out he's his worst enemy. Which is kind of true of the plot anyway. Honestly, if he hadn't done anything, I probably would have, uh, I mean, their whole general region would have gotten crushed, but he would have turned out fine. I mean, eventually he would have found out about the whole he's kind of royalty thing. Also, it's kind of hilarious that both uh, both he and his sister, A, unrelated, B, both wind up being royalty. Oh, whatever. As far as these kinds of revelations go, I think this was one of the better handled ones. Because they're just kind of the kids that nobody wanted. So they just chucked them out a window and they just kind of happened to wind up at the same orphanage. <laughs> okay, politics, etc. Let's get more into testing out this mod. Recruit, yes. So she's the same, her look is fine. That's good. Um Good chance of Donalto dying, actually. So probably just replace him. Uh, she actually comes with a lot of skills right off the bat. Let's see, what do you have this wise? Um yeah, you know what? You can just flat out replace him at this point. That's fine. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of plot significance from here on out anyway. Then we go back here. Discuss some plot. Or uh, wait, is it Almorca? So I should probably equip him, huh? That might be an idea. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, it's probably also time to check on a store update. Probably down to be happening at some point. Oh, and you get your... your sweetness items. Alright. Any other 15s? You. Alright. You get the defender band. You get more defense. Actually, just noticed recently while um, I ended up going and... Wait, whoops. I ended up going and giving a quick look to the original again because I was trying out this uh, this weird challenge idea. I noticed, uh, actually just noticed how little the original jewelry did. It was a little sad. Like before, this one's a 10. The original, it's just a 5. Just a flat out 5. I don't even know where the offense numbers come from on this right now because it just adds 2 for no particular reason. Just gives two to defense. This one gives nothing to... wait a minute. I'm supposed to add five to offense. Or no, this is 20. Okay, never mind. The numbers are a little bit off in some cases. It's just kind of funny. Like, Warrior's Ring? Okay, it adds 10 to ranged offense and then inexplicably adds 12 to melee. Or maybe those numbers aren't perfectly accurate or something. But why does this add two to offense and then like 10 evenly defense-wise? I have no idea. Overthinking this. That's what I'm doing. And I promised you would get some training, so I guess you will. So yeah, give you a prep ton of health, why not? At some point. For now, plot. And then plot happened. And this guy is doing his whole thing. Yes, yes, he's definitely not alright. And then he explains why they went there, and at some point, yeah, I'll do an actual plot run of this. Because I always skip over it, and it's actually amazingly well written. Like, to the point where even in the remake, they one thing I completely missed before that I started paying more attention to, they actually started going and, um... Oh, it's religion time. They actually went and bothered to explain some of the weirder, weirder stuff, like at the very start. How are you going and you... You know, take a castle with like six people. 
That should explain that, yeah, the reason their gates were open and the whole reason that they, um... Well, I can pick up two of these. Uh, the whole reason that you were able to take it is because uh, Ravness and a bunch of other knights showed up and basically, ch you know, got chased off. And at that point, you know, you were able to come in and it was just convenient timing. His uh, vice is there, he's like, yeah, yeah, we did this amazing thing, check it out. And then she shows up, she's like, yeah, I know. Actually, a bunch of people died, and then you got the credit. <laughs> uh, so there's that. Alright, so we got a minor store update. Seems like. A couple extra things in here. I'm not seeing anything new shield-wise, or just armor-wise. Um, oh, I actually forgot to put that hat on uh, L, didn't I? Actually, considering that I almost threw her away as a character, it's kind of amazing that she's still around. Uh, didn't this give a meditate bonus or something? I could have sworn it did. Oh well. Very light bonus. I know that uh, this thing does. You know, that's actually... It doesn't... She doesn't end up getting into physical combat much, and for that she's got parry. Yeah, I think this might be better. Give her a preposterous amount of meditate, maybe get her some more expensive abilities. Now, to be fair, her MP is basically infinite right now. Oh well, anyway. Mount Hayden. I need some long range units for this. So you're gonna be right at the front. Gonna need some faster ones, so you, you. I'm uh, gonna leave Yo or uh, yeah, Johan out of this one. Probably use Carolyn. Gonna need two healers. Uh, gonna need a flyer, gonna need a caster. Er, caster. There we go. Actually, you know what? Ninja might be useful. Okay, no. Rogue, because I want you to get XP. And then... I think Yunin. Because it is a very dragon-heavy map. <laughs> and what they basically decided to do here, since I skipped over the plot entirely, what they wanted to do is go rescue the head of that order there, uh, that he, well, almost ended up killing all of, uh, because they went to the wrong entrance. Uh, yeah, them. Now, the way this usually goes, they've got these guys coming in on the left, or on their left. Not terribly threatening except for this guy. Uh, these can get annoying depending on what they come in with, so looks like he'll be annoying. I've uh, got some ghost casters. Another familiar. Uh, these guys typically bog you down in the center and then you're mostly just looking for an opportunity to break through their line and take out their leader. Uh, let's see if he ends up actually sticking back or charging ahead this time. A lot of times I end up relying on him just running forward and then taking him out with ranged units. Now obviously with the crazy amount of range that ended up showing up in the original, well, you could pretty much just get archers to the center and take him out with no problems, but that was more or less the answer to everything, so I don't think that counts. Actually, on that note, so this weird challenge I was talking about, um... It was one that I'd tried before, and I just got bored of it, but, um... The idea is... You... I mean, this can work in either this game or the base game. Uh, the idea is you take all of, uh, all your guys there, you get to that, uh, first fight in the field with the kind of Viking-looking guy, the Berserker. And, uh, at that point you get access to your AI. You can only control three of your characters, so everyone else you can set up in whatever way you want. You can have a maximum of three per any class, but the idea is, or actually no, four of any class. I'm just kind of for the hell of it. Point, uh, main goal there being that, yeah, you're, uh, you're trying to go through the entire thing with, uh, your team mostly being controlled by the AI. You can control your leader and two bodyguards, and that's it. So that kind of brings most of the challenge more to a setup kind of thing. It was one of those cases where, you know, I, I had my PSP uh, kind of off charging and I was like, you know what, I kind of want to mess around with this challenge while I'm going and can't really sleep. 
We'll try it out. Uh, so far it's been, I mean, relatively straightforward. Nice thing is the AI can't seem to use any of the cheap tr strategies. So I just kind of had my leader with uh, two lizard bodyguards. I was hoping to make him hop leads or something later down the line because I never end up using them. Kind of the kind of one of the big shames of the fact that you can't hire any kind of weird units from the store. Because the original, you know, is awesome. You would go to a particular city and like, okay, these guys have all kinds of reptile units that you can go and hire, or you know, these guys over here have like griffins and octopi and stuff like that. And you get to the remake and it's like, ah, you get people. Only people, and you have to go out of your way and then make a guy a wizard and give him cokes and then use that to go hire a lizard for some reason. Apparently nobody else ever bothered talking to them. It's kind of racist. Alright, so meditate, you should get, yeah. You just get instant nuking abilities. I'll probably end up, end up switching her back down the line, because having her um, be able to avoid stuff is pretty big for my strategy. A lot of times she ends up holding places and casting from the back. Like that last uh, last fight there in the castle would have gone completely different if she wasn't able to block every other thing. <laughs> and this guy is holding up, holding up about as well as the original. And I'll just park him here. Have him take on this bit by himself. I'm just going to have to hope that the leader can hold out for now. He's not really in too much danger in, as far as his location is concerned. So it should be fine. <laughs> Alright, go stab a dragon, I think. Get some points up. Now, did you get... Spears or Draconology up there? Yeah, Spears. We get Windscythe. That is just plain dandy. Okay. Yeah, this double healer thing is pretty fantastic right now. Functionally unkillable. <laughs> Alright, a little bit of an opportunity to get this lady up front. Good. Poison that thing. I'll get him down a little bit. So one thing that I highly doubt is actually... Holy crap, did you just double crit him? <laughs> one thing that I highly doubt is possible to um, to mod in, but I, you know, I'm still gonna throw it out there. Uh, when it comes to these lava maps, uh, whenever somebody's crit or knocked backwards, they always just end up taking a tiny bit of extra, like, stagger damage instead of actually, you know, falling into the lava and losing life. I was wondering if there's any possibility to allow them to actually fall into said lava and then just have it kind of count like where a hole does. Like just replace these things with the same function as a hole. Like I said, I don't think it's possible, but if it could, if it was possible, that'd be awesome. So I'd imagine they would just... How do I explain this? That it would be just like the lava texture functions as a hole texture. Like, they would just fall th fall straight through, there wouldn't be any custom animation or whatever. I don't know. Wouldn't work. I'm certain it wouldn't work, but it would be awesome if it did. Because it was another one of those just weird little things. It's like, it's lava. They can be knocked off cliffs, but they cannot be knocked into lava. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's mostly just for the rating, because that'd be pretty friggin' brutal. But hey, they're just losing one life, right? <laughs> uh, man, could you friggin' imagine? That is... Like so, how did, how did you get back? Oh, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> just got fished out with a fishing pole, I guess. Just put me back together like some sort of Lego. <laughs> Alright. The thing is, at some point I'm gonna want to have somebody going and recruiting these things instead of killing them. Uh, because the same rules apply where if you want to get certain crafting materials, you actually have to go and sell off you know, monster units and things like that. 
So I'll begin them at some point. Okay, bye bye, Carolyn. We're just fine. And we got the leader up front. And this should be pretty much a done deal. I'm gonna let you sit in charge and let you attack this guy. Yeah, his AI doesn't seem to be any improved. A little suicidal as always. Mm, you know what? Practice your fists. You get better at fisting. Mm, 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 mm. Nice. What? No. Nah, he's pretty amazing at this point. Alright, what can you do? Let me just run up and stab. <laughs> Worth a shot. Worth a shot. <laughs> you got your leader stabbed. Okay, and who is... Okay, that's Voltaire that's using that fencer thing. And I think I may just go ahead and attack... Because that way he can he can still use preempt. Uh, he'll end up killing off the Terranite when he attacks him. Uh, he'll end up killing off the Berserker more than likely on a counter. And there we go. Good job, you just played yourself. <laughs> As that saying goes. Now, you can go for a Mighty Strike double impact or go for a Ruination. No, I think... I think the strike and double hit is going to be the better option. Have him get finished off. Yeah, there we go. Pretty comparable damage. Uh, have him get fish finished off by Denim. Seems like the way to go. Bye-bye, <laughs> Nomios. Alright, crap, he actually might get out of range here. <laughs> or stay there like an idiot. Alright. Let's just fast forward to the end here, because that's it, this fight's decided. <laughs> and there we are. Now, by the sounds of it, it, like, I could be wrong, but this soundtrack, this particular one, always made me think uh, you got the same, um, uh, same music people that did FFTA2. Which, by the way, if you haven't played that one, that one's also pretty friggin' fantastic. So, Final Fantasy Tactics A2, Grimoire of the Rift, because they, I guess, decided short and memorable names were for idiots? I don't know. But yeah, that one's awesome. <laughs> this is an extra scene. Uh, this is if you started the um, the plot line for Ozma. So she decides that uh, she's gonna go and go hang out with uh, Habarim. And there we go. Give it a talk. Yes, yes. I don't think there's too much new here. Go to people. Just skip through all of these. There we go. Now everything shows up as red. Now I think it's was it? Was it Balmusa? It's one of these maps. You go back to one of these maps and then you find her. Or actually, no, it, it's, I think it's over here, this one. Prisero. No? Ah, oh, crap, it's one of them. Goliath? Nope. Where do going? It's one of them. Screw it, I tried. Alright, anyway. So I guess that fight will show up later. Actually, no, wait! Ah, oh, crap, no. This is the point at which you have to go, you have to get uh, Habram's loyalty all the way up, and, uh, yeah, no, never mind. 
I'm not gonna do that. That can just... She's in the other save file. So, uh, yeah, I, I already showed that on, I'm pretty sure, the no-skill run and the gun run. Uh, no need to show it a third time. Anyway, next part.